for week one, we're really excited to get started with ACT math. The first thing that we're going to look at is the recommended approach that you want to use for every single question you see in this section. The first thing that you're probably already doing is reading the question. Before you do any calculation though, don't forget that in addition to reading the question, you want to take a look at the answer choices because they can be super helpful in helping you to figure out where to start and actually they give you a good idea of what types of approaches you can use. There are four approaches in all and you can mix and match however you would like. One thing to keep in mind is that picking numbers and back solving, you can use those on over half of all the questions in the section. So 31 or more of those 60 questions can be solved using picking numbers or back solving. So keep that in mind. You want to have those techniques down so that you can increase your efficiency and your accuracy. So you're going to be moving through the section more quickly and you're going to be getting more questions right. Now the last part of this, asking yourself, are you done, is really important, especially towards the end of the section. Oftentimes there's an additional step to get all of those points. So if you're solving for x, double check to see if they were asking in the final step for 1 over x, in which case you'd need the reciprocal. So grabbing those points towards the end of the section really depends on following this method all the way through. Now for step two, you want to know your question types. So if you take a look at this list, you want to devote as much time to trigonometry as you would to algebra. And when you're looking at the list, the top three are algebra, plane geometry, and coordinate geometry. So you think, let's just jump right in. Let's get those points first. We want to be really strategic about this, and we want to build foundational concepts before we jump into the higher level math. So for this week, we're actually going to be doing algebra, ratios, proportions, and averages, and number properties. So that's three categories out of nine and you're actually going to be working on 13 points out of 36. So after this week, you'll be more than a third of the way done with math. Now, in our strategic approach, we want to make sure that we're focusing on algebra. It's worth seven points, and it can help you out with the other concepts as well. Here's an example of a question from Grokit, and it really helps you to figure out what approaches you have available to you in addition to knowing straightforward algebra. For all positive integers a, b, and c, which of the following expressions is equivalent to a, b? So you can solve this with algebra, and what's important is what I had mentioned before, take a look at the answer choices. So taking a look at answer choice a, you can actually rewrite it so it's a little bit easier to think about. You can put a times c over 1, since it's a whole number, presumably, and then you can do b times c. I'm sorry, b divided by c, just kidding, and then the c's cancel out, and you get a times b. Now that's not the only way to solve. You can also pick numbers. We don't want to pick 1 and 0, they have special properties, but 2 and 3 are our most popularly picked numbers, and we have c as well, so we're going to throw in the number 4. So for answer choice a, we decided a is 2, c is 4, b is 3, and c is 4. So we multiply that across, and we get 8 times 3 fourths, which is 6. But wait a second. 6, what does that have to do with anything? Well, what were they asking for? They were asking for a times b. According to the numbers we picked, a is 2, b is 3, so a times b is 6. So whether you're solving with straightforward algebra or you wanted to pick numbers, you're going to get your points on that question. Now our next category is ratios, proportions, and averages. And what's important to know is percents are in there too because percents are ratios. So taking a look at this particular question, it says, if 105% of a number is 315, what is 80% of the number? This is a classic question and you want to know how to translate English into math. So if you have 105%, you can rewrite that as 1.05. Of means multiply. We don't know what the number is, so that's going to be x or any letter you'd like. Is equal to 315. You can divide both sides by 1.05. And you're going to get a number that's not listed in the answer choices. But it goes back to the recommended approach, which is right below me. You want to double check to see if you're done. We don't want x 
all by itself, which winds up being actually 300, which again is not listed, we want 80% of x. So we're going to show you how proportions come into play. You can actually just multiply 300 by 0.8, but we mentioned proportions and ratios and percents and averages, they all go hand in hand. So let's put this together as a proportion. So 80 over 100, which is 80%, is equal to how much of 300? When you cross multiply and do the math, you're going to get actually a really big number. You're going to get a bunch of zeros. You're going to get 24,000 is equal to 100x. Divide both sides by 100, x equals 10 to 240, which is answer choice B. So this is another foundational concept. You can pick up four points by acing ratios, proportions, and averages. And in addition to what we just saw, don't forget about your number properties. Our final category for week one is number properties, and this is another classic question. If x and y are positive integers such that the greatest common factor of x, y squared, and x squared y to the 3, or y cubed, is 48, then which of the following could y equal? Oh my goodness, that was a lot of information. What we're going to do for this question, and you can actually memorize this approach because you are likely to see a question like this on test day, is you line them up and you see what they have in common. So they have just one x. The second number that's represented by the letters has two x's, but it's not in common with the first one. All they have together is one x. And just like you see three y's in the second number, only two of them are common. So that's your greatest common factors, x, y squared, x times y squared. That's equal to 48. Because you're doing greatest common factor, it is time for a factor tree. You can split this up in a variety of different ways. And you can keep going because the fours do break down into twos, but keep in mind that we're looking for something that resembles x times y squared. So we have two fours and we have one three. So they're asking what could y equal? It could equal a four. It could definitely not equal a three. That's not gonna work out so well. Now looking at the answer choices, you could actually back solve your way through this one, but you may find that doing the factor tree is a lot easier for you. But it all depends on what type of approach you like to take. So our strategic focus is really important because these foundational concepts, you're going to build on them in subsequent weeks so that you know what you're going to be doing going forward with all of ACT math. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to practice these foundational concepts. Again, that's 13 points out of 36, over a third of the way done after this week, once you complete all of your practice. So you have some options. On Grokit, you can actually do this completely independently. You just complete the first seven of the 17 segments of your study plan. Or you can join in group games. We set them up ahead of time for you, and you can just hop right in. If you wanted to create your own, if you wanted to look at specifically lower, medium, or higher difficulty, you can do that as well. Or if you have the red Real ACT Prep Guide book at home, that's fine too. Just complete 1 through 30 in three separate tasks. That way you'll be guaranteed to see all of the different foundational concepts we saw here. You'll have some other things thrown in too since that book doesn't differentiate and it's not going to be a variety of different levels, but it will cover everything that we talked about today. So get started on this, get your 